Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for the broadcast. At this time, we'll have our master teacher, Apostle Jeremiah Cummings. God bless everybody. God bless you. We are doing a change of scenery tonight. Everything is seem to be changing right now. If some of you just uh, caught that, you know, but uh, I just want to teach tonight. Um, there's a lot going on, and as I told you on, on the last broadcast, that the turning point has turned. And we've seen that even on yesterday, uh, to see people in the hallways of the Capitol where I once um, was a Metropolitan Police Officer in the city of Washington, D.C., before Harold Melvin called me to become a Blue Note, and to see people walking through the Capitol and, and defaming Washington, D.C., my home, um, it was quite moving. But the kingdom of God uh, is being established in the earth. A righteous government that is going to be governed by righteous men and women is now being raised up in the midst of a society that is uh, perishing. I want to talk to you about if God is my father, then who am I? If God is my father, then who am I? In, in the teaching of the Hebrew scholars that I sat under in Jerusalem in 1991, I went there with the word Abba Yah. Abba Yah, A-B-B-A-Y-A-H. Abba Yah means God is my father. That's exactly what the word Abba Yah means. A-B-B-A, Abba Yah, father. God, oh God. Abba, A-B-B-A, father. Yah, Y-A-H, God. God is our father. And if God is my father and your father, then who are we? Amen. Erica Baidu, I think I shared with you, Erica Baidu used to come past uh, my bookstore in Dallas, Texas around 1993. Uh, it was called The House of Knowledge. And in one of her first albums, um, while she was coming by and reading books and watching tapes, she said, um, if I'm made in the image and likeness of God, then call me who I am. And I thought about that when I began to teach on the glory of God. I just got a letter. I wish I had it with me today from Bishop T.D. Jakes, where he's teaching on the glory. And um, it's exciting because um, we're teaching messages in the key of life. Stevie Wonder is uh, another friend of mine that I met um, in Los Angeles back in um, 1975, you know, and then he came out with an album in 1976 called Songs in the Key of Life. Well, um, the messages that God is bringing to us through the School of the Prophets University are messages in the key of life. They're living messages because we serve a living God and we teach a word that is alive. Amen. So if God is my father, then who am I? If God is your father, then who are you? I'm quoting from the book of Isaiah 61 in verse number 10. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. My soul will be joyful in the Lord my God. For he has clothed me in his garment of salvation. And he has covered me in his robe of righteousness. And we are one in the name of of King, Messiah, Jesus, let's get to it. Amen. If God is my father, and God is my father in Hebrew is Abba Yah, if God is my father, then who am I? Well, let's look at the promises of God, because everything is established on the covenant of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, and verse number 18, God said this, and I will be a father unto you. My God. He said, I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, 
saith the Lord Almighty. Now here is a promise. Here is a promise from God that is being fulfilled in this very time. In 2 Corinthians 6, 18. Look at it. It's in the Bible if you tore the page out. He said, and I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters. Said the Lord, God Almighty. Then, when we look at this very closely, it has always been the will of God to be a father. A uh, Abba to you. Amen. It has always been from the very beginning of time. God wanted to make a carbon copy of himself. Amen. And, and be a father to us. A provider, a protector, a promoter. That's what a father does. He provides, he protects, and he promotes. He pushes his children further than he had ever gone. Watch this. That's why Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do, and greater works than these shall you do. I'm going back to the Father. Now watch this. I was speaking with my son, Jerry Cummings, the other day, and he FaceTimed me. And he saw a picture of me when I was about mm, 12 years old, you know, maybe 13. And he looked at the picture of me with my grandmother, my aunt, his mother, and uh, my cousin David. He looked at the picture, and he, he said, it scared me. And I said, well, why did it scare you? He said, because you look just like my son, Justin. He said, I, he said it was so spooky. When God is your father, you become a carbon copy of him spiritually. Amen. Not physically, because God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The word of God is spirit and it is life. Jesus taught us that. He said, the words that I speak, my God, I'm feeling this. He said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So when we talk about becoming a carbon copy of God, we're talking about um, the, uh, the word Yasha, you know, which means glory. Amen. Oh, kavod. I'm sorry. Kavod. K-A-V-O-D. Which means glory. And God says that he has created you for his glory. In Isaiah 43 and verse number 7. He said, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. He said, I created you to be a carbon copy of myself. Amen. What father does not want a son that reminds him of that, of himself. Amen. What father does not want a son or a daughter that takes on his attributes, that reminds him of himself? I have daughters. I have a daughter, Michelle, just turned 50 years old. I have a daughter, Delicia. You know, uh, and, they and I see certain traits of myself in them. Amen and amen. And I have a son, Jerry Cummins Jr. He just like me. He's so gifted. He plays keyboard. He's a producer. He's a film, he's a film producer. Played in a movie with Taraja P. Henson when he was like 13 years old in Washington, D.C. So God wanted to reproduce himself. So he tells us in the Bible. He lets us know in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 17, he said, I will, that's a promise, I will be a father unto you, and you will be my sons, and you will be my daughters, says the Almighty God. Now, in the same chapter of 2 Corinthians, chapter number uh, 6, and if you look at verse number 16, God says, I will dwell in them. Whoa, oh, my God. God says, I will dwell, live in them. Amen? Then he says, and walk in them. Well, if God says you are going to be, he said, I'm going to be a father to you. And what's going to make me your father is that it won't be you. It'll be me <laughs> dwelling in you. It'll be me walking in you. It'll be me talking in you. See, we go all the way back to the book of Genesis. And we get so uh, 
so mixed up that when God breathed into man, man became, look in second in Genesis chapter number two and verse number seven, it says, and the God and God formed man. Now he had already created him in Genesis chapter one. And uh, y'all listen to me. So we go from the creation of man to the forming of man in Genesis chapter two and verse number seven. He says, listen to me. Y'all follow me now. Follow me. He said, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into man. That word breathe is the breath of God in Hebrew, which means ruah, R-U-A-H. And God breathed into man uh, the breath of life. In other words, God breathed into man his own essence, his own spirit, his own power, his own wisdom. And man became not just a living soul, man became a speaking spirit. Amen. Y'all listen to me. And that's, that's the aim of God. But then, but then, listen to me. But man failed. And, 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 and Ezekiel uh, saw the fall of man in, Genesis, in, Exodus, in, in Ezekiel 37 as a valley of dry bones. Amen. And God asked him, these people that appear to be dead, they're like a valley of dry bones. They're in the valley. I've been there. I, I, stood, on, um, I stood on Mount Zion. And I looked down and saw the cemetery that Ezekiel was looking at when God took him up in the spirit and showed him a valley full of bones. Bones represent a people that once had life, but now they are dead. They're separated from God. That's what death means. Hey, listen to me. He said they're dead. He said they appear to be dead. And they've been dead a long time. And then God asked the prophet Ezekiel, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know, only you know. And God gave him the remedy. God told him what he was going to do before he did it. That book of Ezekiel is pointing to us in this day. Y'all listen to me. It was prophetic. It was a prophetic vision for this hour that we're living in. Let's make it rhema word. He says in Ezekiel 37, verse number 14, listen to the promise. In Ezekiel 37, verse number 14, he said, I will put my spirit, my spirit, breath, my ruah in you, and you will come to life. Watch this. And I will place you in your own land. That means I'm going to separate you from man-made religions and tradition. Then you will know that I am the Lord have spoken and fulfilled it, says the Lord. Now, y'all listen to me. Now, this is a pro this is a picture of the second birth. How are you going to give something dead life God? And God answers the question in Ezekiel 37 and verse number 5. Thus said the Lord unto these bones. These people that once had life but they are now dead because they have deviated from the plan of God. Amen. The fall of Adam caused death to reign on earth. But then God said... Thus said the Lord unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into your nostrils. The breath of life and man, watch this, and ye shall live. Now, all the way, I just want you to walk with me because I know this is a deep teaching and you need to share it, you need to look at it again and again and again because if God is my father and he said he would be my father, he said in 2 Corinthians 6 and 18, And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God, regardless of the fall of Adam. It doesn't matter. And then God had a plan. God had a master plan. What's wrong with the political world in America is that we had a man in the, in the White House with no plan. And chaos always comes to pass when you have no plan. But God's got a plan. 
And God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Amen. He said, I, he said not plans of disaster, but of peace and to bring you to an expected end. In Jeremiah 29 and 11. Y'all all right? Stay with me. This is deep, but we ain't going backwards. We're going forward. He says in Ezekiel 37 and verse number 9 and 10, Thus said the Lord, these bones, these people that once had life but are now dead, these people who have fallen under the curse of Adam, these people who have been under the uh, under the prophets who, who have deviated and perverted my word, he said, I will call breath to enter into you and you shall live. Now remember, he breathed into man the breath of life in Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 7. And man became a speaking spirit. But because of Adam's failure and because man failed, he had to do it again. And so when he asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? He said, only you know. And then God told him what he was going to do. He says in Ezekiel 37 and 5, Thus said the Lord unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath, ruah, his breath, to enter into you, and you shall live. Then he said unto me, in verse number 10, Then he, then he said unto me, Prophesy, listen to this, Prophesy me, speak into the future. Then he said, Prophesy unto the wind, and prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, come forth the four winds. The four winds. All of this is allegorical. You listen to me. The four winds. He ain't talking about no ordinary winds. If I told you what he's talking about, you would say, how you get that? I could prove it. I could prove it. He was speaking. <laughs> I'm not going to even take you there yet. We got to deal with this. I can tell you what the four winds are. He said, prophesy, son of man, and say to the, and, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, there we go again, ruah, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. What brought you to life? What did God breathe upon you that you might come to life? He breathed upon you his word. He breathed upon you the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it was in John 3, he said, when he was asked the question, um, when, he was, when, he, when he taught, man must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. What brings you to life is the word of God. Found in the four winds, and I can show you that in the New Testament. Found in the four winds that Ezekiel was prophesying about. Ezekiel might didn't even know it was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John hadn't even been born yet. But the word of God is eternal. The word of God. God had a plan for you to hear. And in the, and in the four gospels, you have the birth of Christ, the Messiah. And, and who says... I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, if he came that we might have life, then we must have been dead before he came. We were dead in trespasses and sin. But when the word came, the living word came, good God am I, he came that we may have life, not just human life, but a supernatural God kind of life and God kind of faith. This is why. The Apostle Paul said, it's no longer I that live. In Galatians chapter number 2 and verse number 20, he said, it is no longer I that live, but it is Christ the Messiah who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me so much and he gave himself for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, I could teach it. He said, prophesy to the four winds. And Ezekiel said, I did it. He says in Ezekiel 37 and 10, he says, so I prophesied and as he commanded me. That word prophesied here means I gave them a look into the future. 
That's what prophecy does. Prophecy is not for the past. Prophecy teaches you what's coming. And I thank God for the school of the prophets university because it's not just a name. It's an assignment with 971 members today. Amen. Amen. Look, he said, so I prophesied to them. I told them what their future would be and, it, and as he commanded me. And when I told them, when I gave them the promise, breath came into them. There we go again. Ruah. Breath came into them. And they lived. What kind of life did they live? They lived an abundant life. They lived the life of a God. Not of a human being. Because it's God's breath in you. Amen. And if God's breath is in you, Ruah, then you have the life of God in you. And that's how he dwells in you. That's how he walks in you. That's how he talks to you. That's how he heals through you. That's how he brings finances to you. That's how he gives you heaven on earth while you're alive right now. He said, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath, hey, and breath, my breath, came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet. An exceeding great and mighty army. An exceeding great and mighty army. Because they have responded to the exceeding great and precious promises of God. Amen. What gives us the power to be who God created us to be is his promises. Is it His promises are his covenant. When God makes a promise, God makes a covenant with you. And if God says no weapon formed against you will prosper, then no weapon formed against you will ever prosper because he knows that if he chose you, you're going to have opposition. You're going to have enemies. You're going to have jealous spirits coming at you. You're going to have people that's going to try to trip you up and make you go in the wrong direction instead of the straight path that God created for you. Amen. If God is my father, then who am I? How, who are you? If God is your father, Amen. you are a carbon copy of God. You are the glory of God. And when Jesus came, he came to give you the glory. In John 17, in verse number 22, Jesus said, And the glory which you have given to me, I have given to them that they may be one, even as we are one. He said, I in them. In verse 23 of John, of John 17, he said, I in them, and you in me, that they, you, that they may be made perfect. Nothing missing in their life. Nothing absent in their life. That they may be one, even as we are one. That they may be a carbon copy of of us. So he gives us nothing but the word. That's why the fire couldn't burn Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego because they had received the breath of God and the breath of God is also the word of God. They had received it when, when um, Isaiah 43 and verse number 2 he said when you walk through the fire he said you will not be burned. Amen. He said, when you walk through the waters, he said, they will not overtake you. And through the rivers, they will not drown you. He said, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And they took that into the fiery furnace. They took the word, the breath of God, into the fiery furnace. And when they lit the fiery furnace, good God Almighty, when they lit the fiery furnace, they looked in and they said, did not we throw, King Nebuchadnezzar did, did not we throw three in there? Well, I see one that looks like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar never saw the Son of God. He saw an angel who had power over fire that is mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter number 14. He saw the angel who had power over fire. God has given us angels charged over us. We Look, I know that we got a hundred billion. Oh, yeah, for every brain cell. There are 100 billion brain cells in your head. And God has given an angel of 100 billion to watch over us. 
to open doors for us. Amen. To make us successful. Amen. To make us victorious. To make us rich. If you might, if you read Psalms 102, he said, wealth and riches will be in your house. Amen. Wealth and riches will be in our house because God break. Look, God spoke it. He breathed it into us. I'm going to tell you, I'm so fired up. At the same time, I'm so happy. Because I'm alive, going on 70 years old, and going to witness, and am witnessing, amen, the establishment of the kingdom of God, and the end of an age that is going out the door with 2020. 2021 will be the year of superior blessings in our lives. A year where all bills are paid off. And a year where health returns to you like that of a baby. My God, I thank God that I am a grandfather as of January the 5th. I'm a grandfather again as of January the 5th. Amen. My son and, and his wife, Heather, just gave a, a newborn to the earth. And they already prophesied over the baby. Talking about he's going to be a great prophet. Amen. He's going to know. He's going to be a great little God. Amen. And I thank God for all of you. I want you to tell the world. Spread the word. If God is our Father, who are we? Who are we? According to Revelation 5 and 10, He has made us kings and priests. Kings and prophetesses and prophets. He has made us king and we shall reign on this earth. And when we begin to reign on this earth and things are being put in position right now around the world for us to reign, that means when we have a definite goal in our mind, the world has to step aside and let us pass. That's the key. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for 2021. Amen and amen. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for my wife. Amen. We wearing them out. Amen. We wearing out the people that's been stealing these albums. And my reputation with Harold Melvin and the Bruno, we wore them out today in court. And we're going to keep on wearing them out until they give up what is rightfully ours. And if they mess around, we're on the company. Amen, amen. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you. I preached a message called, I know who I am. God wants you this year to know who you are. He's not up in the sky somewhere. That's not where he lives. He lives in your mind and in your heart. That's where he lives. He says, in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, I will dwell in them. Well, dwell means live. And I will walk in them. And they will be my people. I will be their God. And then he says in verse 18, And I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters. You will be a carbon copy of me. You'll walk like me. You'll talk like me. You'll live a life of righteousness. That's the character of God. Righteousness is the character of God. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's his character. Amen. And all of these things, no limit, will be added unto you. If God is your father, then who are you? You are a carbon copy of your father. Amen. Amen. I'm going to teach on this a little bit longer the next time. But only on Thursdays can you get us now. We're getting ready to get busy. Get ready to sign a major publishing deal. Major. It's going all over the world. Amen. Got to have our Sundays free because television is going to be coming up. I mean, worldwide television. Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, we're going everywhere. We're from gold to glory.
from gold to glory. Go there. You better start getting it now. Amen. From gold to glory.com. Go there. And then don't forget our Helping Hands Restoration Ministries down in Jackson, Mississippi with our Ambassador Joe Thomas and Deacon Steve Thomas. If you go to ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com, amen, you'll see Helping Hands right there at the top next to donations. Amen. You can make a donation to the ministry. Amen. You can use our cash app at dollar sign SGM920. And you can sow a seed that's going to bless you for sowing. Amen. And we thank God for all of you. Amen. Our ambassador Zelma, you know, up in Toronto, Canada, she'll post all of these things along with the scriptures that you heard tonight. Your bets just got better. And the turning point has turned because somebody is telling you if God is your father, then who are you? God bless you. We'll see you on next Thursday. 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. I am Apostle Jeremiah Cummings with my beautiful and lovely and powerful wife, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummings. God bless you. We'll see you next week. God bless you. And you too, Noah. And you too, Noah. And you too, Noah. God bless you, my wonderful grandson. God bless you.